and welcome to Australia. Thank, Thank you. you. How's it? This is your first time here, right? How are you enjoying yourselves? We love gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. It's so cool it's here. Stunning. Yeah. Sydney's incredible. I love to travel a little bit more outside of Sydney if there's time, but we're pretty busy at the moment. Yeah. This has been an extraordinary season for a, a lot of different reasons, Sadie, but I want to go to you first because straight out the box, episode one, Kate Bush uh -huh. is now number one around the world with Running Up That Hill, which you helped reintroduce to, I guess, a new generation. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't really expecting no. Sure. This kind of now you're hit makers yeah. again. See, now you're like, you know, I you can crown so. the top of the charts. I don't know, but it, I I mean, it's, a great, it. it's a great song. You called it? I figured. I figured. I mean, it was like, it's like the whole season. That's true, yeah. I mean, yeah. And it's, it's kind of an epic, like... It's great. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah. It's, it's a great amazing. song. Um, Gayton, you're one, of the, you're one of the OGs, right, from the, yeah. from the original series. How does season four compare to others that we've seen in the past? Ah, uh, well, it's long. Uh, it's huge. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it was, it's... Uh, Definitely in contrast to the first season. I think just an attitude on set. I think we're all very grateful to be a part of, uh, of the show that we all loved so much from the start, but it was very up near as to whether we were going to get another season, if it was going to do well. It was pretty small, and uh, we were just glad to be there and really grateful and uh, could never have imagined what has come out of it. And this year, I think, I mean, the bar's been set so high. I mean, three years, three seasons in a row. So to be going at it again at this scale is incredible. Priya, I gotta tell you, I'm loving your character in this. I love the Dungeons and Dragons and how much swag she has. Let's check out some of the sass she's got. I'm sorry, why is this four-year-old speaking to me? Um, I'm Tim, you bald bastard. Uh, Erica! This is Hellfire Club, not Babysitting Club. I'm 11, you long-haired freak. <laughs> Get in. How great is it playing Erica for you? It feels great, you know, I think she's very quick with and um, full of surprises a little bit, especially this season, how she gets to play around with her nerd side a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's really fun, and I just love seeing Erica's personality and even seeing, like, how that is compared, third season is compared to, like, fourth season. Yeah, it's great to see her step her. into yeah, it Yeah, it's yeah. so funny, so... Um, and Sadie, obviously we don't want to issue any spoilers. We we're just speaking about this in the ad break. Nothing worse, right? Yeah. Um, but Max is dealing with a lot this season. So how was this for you as an actor taking on that? Was it particularly challenging this, this yeah. season? Challenging, but just really exciting, I think. Mm. Um, one thing that's like so great about being on a series is each season, when you come back, your character's in slightly, like a bit of a different place and you get to kind of develop these characters even further. So yeah, that was really challenging, but really, really exciting heading into season four. Okay, now I gotta tell you, for fans who've been watching this the whole way through, we have had that three year break. And look, a lot of us are parents out there. Kids grow up. Mm -hmm. And I remember, so when I turned this season on last week and I was starting to watch it, I was like, oh God, they're all older. And I, I kind of got emotional. So, we're all very attached to We're all so attached to you guys, you know? Yeah. So how is it feeling like, you know, growing up with each other on set? Are you all taking care of each other? Is there a real sense of like, this is a bond for life now. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's such a weird way to grow up. You know what I mean? It's, such, it's, it's very interesting. It's exciting. It's, it's wonderful. But it's, it's, it's great. And to, be, to do it with people your age mm -hmm. and to be alongside such great people throughout uh, the crazy experience of making the show, it's kind of essential. You know, I think we definitely all need each other on set and off. Do you guys, Priya and, and, and everybody, do you all realise a lot of the references that are being made? Do, do the Duffer Brothers show you, like... <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that, because I'd be worried if I was a parent if, if directed <laughs> yeah. to show. Do they give you the references of things that we all grew up on as older people? I don't know. Yes. I, feel, we, I feel like we've wa I watched most of the stuff at this point already. Yeah, I don't know. Some no? too scary for me. Yeah. 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 No way. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what haven't you seen? Like, I, Nightmare on Elm Street. You haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh, it's fantastic. No way. Yeah. I won't spoil yeah, it for you. Like, I don't know that I'd recommend it. I don't know. It scares yeah. me. I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. When you watch awesome. Stranger Things back, do you jump the way we all do? Or are you kind of cool with it like now? I feel like I'm just... I've never... I don't think I, I analyze too much when I watch it. It's hard to, like, sit back and just enjoy when right. it's I'm like you spend like, so much time. Exactly. Why are you doing that? Yeah. What about on set, that dynamic with, you know, Winona Ryder, for example? She's someone who has lived in the spotlight for such a huge part of her life. Is she something of a mentor to you all? Is she able to sort of hand you, hold your hand through this process? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, she has kind of been in a similar yeah. position, of course. And so having someone like her... Um, 
on set and then just like in our lives is pretty amazing. But as young people as well, as young people, how old am I? <laughs> as young people as <laughs> He's a lot older than you realise. <laughs> do, do, um, do people stop you now? I mean, I mean, your life is so different now. You're in the spotlight all the time, Priya. People, you are in our living rooms all the time. You're, people are obsessed with the show. Do people stop you in the street? Has your life changed dramatically now? Oh, I think with me, I changed my look up so much. It's okay. hard for people to um, really tell if, if I'm Erica or Priya. They kind of they kind of get a little confusing. I think more so when I talk and my voice, that's when they're like, oh, it sounds familiar. I have been getting noticed a little bit more um, um, when I go out a little bit more because I just think season four mm -hmm. just came out and people, everyone is, like, watching it. So sure. I have been getting noticed a little bit more. But pretty much... Everything is the same for me, you know. I have some other stuff going on, which is great too. But I still go to school, still. Okay. Yeah. Have what do my all your friends. friends at school think about this? They think it's cool. Like <laughs> everyone was like watching. Do. Everyone was like watching it and posting about it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But I don't talk about it at school because I like to make it like my act. My work is my work. Yeah. When I'm at school, I'm at school. Yeah. So okay. I kind of keep that separate a little bit. But if they post about it, of course, I'm going to say, like, thank you for supporting the show. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, give us a little preview, if you can. You know, the final episodes of season four drop on July 1, right? Yeah. What can we expect here? How much danger are you guys in? A lot oh, of danger. Oh, man. And if you think part one was crazy, <laughs> like, part two is nuts. Just, it's wow, bizarre. really? Yeah. yeah, just where we leave off, I think, with seven is just a, a good sign. It's a, it's a good representation of what's in store. I mean, especially, I mean, they have the trailer out for part two, which is they? crazy. And so, yeah, they have the teaser that dropped right after uh, when they released this first season. They also released the teaser for part two. Mm -hmm. I love how across this you are I saying know, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> this is news to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's not your brief. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, it is such a thrill having you in here, guys. Thank you, guys Congratulations on you. the enormous success that you're enjoying with this show. It's breaking records once again. Such a great guy. Will Wheaton is with us again live. Will, great to see you, mate. How are you? Hi, nice to see you. Congratulations on your, your book, your collection of posts. I mean, you were blogging in the early noughties before Ooh. everyone now is a blogger. Uh, you're a New York Times yes. bestselling author. So did you know, know way back... I know, congratulations. Did you have any idea what you were getting into when you just thought, I'm going to write some blogs? Absolutely not. Um, I started my blog in 1999, 2000, because... I had lived my entire life with other people speaking for me. And I never really had an opportunity to put my voice front and center and share my experience and tell my story. And blogging made that possible. And it was kind of novel and new at the time. So people paid attention and it allowed some of us that were fledgling writers in the early 2000s mm. to find our audience, to find our voices. And some of us even got published. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's been an incredible journey for me. It provided a great new platform, didn't it? I think, though, many of us would hate to go back over our, like, MySpace accounts, you know, from the early <laughs> 90s and, you know, read our posts from back then. What did you learn about yourself by revisiting those early blog posts? I saw that... When I was looking back at who I was when I wrote those, I was a good person. I was a loving husband and a loving father and a person in an extraordinary amount of pain. I was uh, undiagnosed with mental illness. I was untreated because I was undiagnosed. And I had not yet really reckoned with the reality that I was an abused and exploited child. And when I went back to revisit a lot of the parts of myself that I thought were kind of gross, what I really saw was, oh, that's parts of me that are in all kinds of pain that are sort of acting out. And I thought, well, I have this opportunity to see myself in a way that I always wanted to be seen. And also maybe by example, show folks who feel like I really regret what I did on MySpace or Twitter or whatever X number of years ago, that we can absolutely take a uh, responsibility for hurtful or childish or or just poorly considered things that we said and did, uh, make amends for them, and then move forward. That's called growth. That's um, and I hope that by showing people that I could do this, um, that maybe it'll inspire other people to do it in their own lives. That's a really fascinating point, isn't it? Because, you know, there are instances where we see people getting, you know, trolled and eviscerated for things that they've said in, in their past. But I suppose the point you're making is that we're all entitled to grow and evolve. 
I think it's very important, and I make this very clear and still just a geek. You know, there were times when I was a, a young writer, an early writer, where I just didn't understand my privilege. I didn't understand that, like, turning a waitress into a punchline was really awful mm. and 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 gross and misogynist and not okay. The thing about this is that these things were never okay. And I wasn't aware of how not okay they were. But then as soon as I was, I got to work like making amends and owning it and changing my behavior and holding myself accountable. And I think that's a very important part of that entire process is that we have to hold ourselves accountable and mean it rather than do this thing that a lot of narcissists and abusers do, which is just avoid, deflect, not talk about things, allow some amount of time to pass and then say, I thought we moved past that. That's not a healthy way to deal with things. You are such a great uh, example of that and how to survive your trauma and how to grow from your trauma is really important and that's why I think you've got so many fans. Yeah. We'd love to talk to you more but we are out of time. Congratulations on the book and once again I'm still thank deeply you. impressed by the shelf behind you. I think yeah. I could do two oh, hours going you through much. that. About half my game, it's about half my game collection. The other half is off camera. But yeah, thank yeah. you very much. You got <laughs> it buddy. Well, we'll I'm speak to very, you again soon. very grateful and I just say thank you to everybody who's ever supported me. I have yeah. this amazing game room because you've supported my work and I really appreciate <laughs> it. Cool.